Um, that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to talk about. And there's just a couple of other really small things that I, I, I really wanted to mention before I, I go. And again, a lot of this might be confusing. This is long. I've been streaming for a little over an hour now. So there's a lot of stuff to digest here, a lot of stuff to take in. But I hope this makes sense to a lot of people out there. But the main thing I want to do, uh, and I do want to mention this a little bit, uh, Pat the Flip, um, another player who's doing a lot of educational stuff, has done a couple of articles, a couple of videos that's very important. Uh, the, the, the blog post that he's written, you can find him on Twitter at Pat the Flip, all one word. Uh, he's talked about, you know, uh, why you're losing. He's had, uh, you know, different philosophies on how to learn fighting games in a very good way. And these are more outside of the fighting game. These are just more lessons in general. I'm going to echo some of these things. You really have to have patience. You really, really have to have patience. You're going to go online and you're going to lose a lot if you don't know how to play fighting games just yet. And it's going to be frustrating. But what you have to do is you have to take the lessons and you have to understand why you're losing. Because a lot of times what's going to happen is you're going to go up and you're going to play against a bison. And I've seen a lot of people complain about this character already. They're saying everything that bison has is safe. I can't punish anything that Bison does. Oh my god, he's so cheap. He's so overpowered. He's so good. The thing about it is when you watch a good Bison play and he goes up and plays against another good player, that other good player is not going to get beat by a lot of those things that you're getting beat by. They're, they're punishing scissor kicks or beating it beforehand or just not even being in the position where Bison scissor kicks can cause them problems. In other words... Things that the opponent are doing can be countered. There's ways to fight it. And one of the hardest things to really accept in fighting games is that is to resist the urge of thinking, this move is cheap. This guy is a scrub. All he does is spam this overpowered move over and over again. Oh my gosh, this character should be nerfed. These are the last things that you should try to say to yourself. Anytime you say these things to yourself, you're really hindering your own way for learning how to play fighting games. If you focus on why these moves are cheap, you're not ever going to learn. So again, you're going to lose a lot, but understand when you see something's too good, go to training mode. Have the tra Program the training mode dummy. I will have an episode where I show you how to use training mode, okay? Because training mode is really robust this time, much more robust than Street Fighter 4. You can actually learn a lot of stuff um, in this game. You can learn a lot of stuff in this game from training mode. So um, I will do an episode on how to use training mode at some point. But go into training mode. Make Bison do scissor kicks. See what you can do to stop it. See if there's any ways that you can figure out how to punish it or avoid it. Or, or you know, have good answers to him when you even after you block it. Use bison. See, see what happens when you spam the scissor kick over and over again and see how the opponent deals with them and then use those as your lesson. The main thing is you really have to understand that in a balanced fighting game, okay, because this is not true for some unbalanced fighting games, but 90% 90, 90 of the fighting games that we're playing these days are, are, are strangely very balanced. In most fighting games these days, there is a counter to everything. Okay, there always is a way to, to, to counter stuff. Someone actually, joked, uh, someone actually joked in the stream chat a while ago, and I'm kind of glad they did, because um, they joked, what about tic-tac-toe when I was going over rock, paper, scissors, and the hand slap game? If you go first in tic-tac-toe, you can't lose. You can only win. It's a solved game, right? That's the equivalent of a broken character, of an unbalanced game, okay? For the most part, fighting games are not tic-tac-toe. If you're going to play something super old like uh, Samurai Showdown 2 where Ukio kills everybody and nobody can kill Ukio, yeah, of course, you know, there's going to be some stuff that's legitimately cheap. But for the most part, playing Street Fighter V, playing Street Fighter IV, playing Killer Instinct, playing a lot of these games right now, there's nothing that we know of right now that's broken.
Everything is counterable. The balance is really strong in a lot of these games. So when you play online, the reason why I'm babbling about this is when you play online and you start losing to some tactic over and over again, figure out how to beat it. Accept the fact that you're being outplayed. Accept the fact that your opponent is being smarter than you. Once you start accepting that, once you start understanding that, that's what's going to help you get to be a better player. Because you think to yourself, you know what, someone else beat this, I should be able to beat it too. So you will have the mindset to go and learn how to beat it. So that's one of the main things that I wanted to mention. Um, you're you're going to lose if you're not very good at fighting games when you start. But you can get good at fighting games. Like I said, a lot of people are terrible at fighting games and they've gotten good at them. I've seen people who I legitimately thought were bad and I thought that these people would never learn how to play fighting games and they've gotten really good at it. So um, it's definitely possible. Don't give up. You know, stick at it. Everything takes a lot of practice. One of the things that's tricky is that everyone wants to be the best at this game right away. Yet somehow everybody knows that if you go up against uh, LeBron James, you're going to get bodied. That LeBron James just has this giant repertoire of practice and skills that makes him better than everybody else. Um, that's the same thing with fighting games. Yeah, I understand. It's a video game. You think that you should be able to jump on here, do everything, and be just as good as some pros instantaneously. Um, that's just that's not going to happen. It, it is going to take practice. It is going to take effort. It will take more effort for some than others, but um, you can do it. You can definitely do it. I believe in you. I do not think fighting games are impossible to learn. And in fact, the reason why I brought all these old examples up with you know the hand slap game, with rock, paper, scissors, with Link to the Past, and all these things like that, is because you have played fighting games before. All aspects of fighting games, you have played that game at one point in time or another, and you have learned how to game that game. You know, Like I said, with the hand slap game, you'll twitch this hand and attack with this. When you're a kid, you think you're all crafty about that and stuff like that. You think, like, this is the best tactic ever. Ha <laughs> ha! You know, all of these games, you've known how to play these games. You come up with these ideas. Like I said, in Zelda, you know to avoid people dancing and out. You're already playing footsies in these games. You know how to play all these games. You just need to apply it to fighting games. The reason why fighting games are scary is because you can't run backwards and hide behind cover like you can in a first-person shooter and you're put there right there. You just see the opponent right there in front of you right from the get-go. So it is a little bit trickier. I did say at the beginning I'm here to tell you that fighting games aren't hard. Um, I still believe that everybody that's in the chat or everybody that's watching this YouTube video can 100% learn fighting games and get good at fighting games. It is gonna take effort though, but if you just keep it in mind that everything about fighting games is something that you have done before that you have played in other games with other people, hopefully that helps you look at fighting games in a different way, not as some enigmatic matrix code that you have to stare at forever and eventually you can see the girl with the red dress. No, fighting games are not as crazy as you think. It's built out of many components of stuff that you already know. And if you can apply all those different aspects, you can learn how to play fighting games as well. So that's going to conclude this episode that I have right now. But I'm going to go into a lot more things. So there are a lot of technical aspects that, you know, uh, that's problematic, right? Like some people can't do uppercut motions. Some people can't throw fireballs. I am going to continue to do very, very beginner level stuff. So one of the next episodes I'm probably going to do is just talk about how to recognize what buttons to use with your character. Say like you love Karen, so you pick Karen and you're like, I don't know what buttons to use. I'll show you how to figure out which buttons to use. Uh, I'll teach you how to do fireball motions. I'll teach you how to do uppercut motions. And uh, I'll teach you how to use training mode, like I said. Uh, I'll teach you all sorts of things. So please um, subscribe to our YouTube youtube.com slash TV. Follow our Twitch channel so you know when we do this again, which is twitch.tv slash TV. And uh, follow myself on Twitter, at jchenzor. If there's anything that you want to see, please tweet at me uh, with the hashtag first attack to let me know that that's stuff that you actually want to see. Um, also, I want to do an episode at one point in time 
where I ter talk about um, terminology because a lot of people hear a lot of things in fighting games and I spew them out without even thinking about it anymore. Like one time I talked about doing a jump short and someone was like, I don't know what that means. Like, is, does that mean you do like a smaller jump or whatever? And I was like, oh, sorry, that was confusing. I meant jump LK. And the guy was like, what's LK? I guess that means, you know, and I was like, wow, wow. You know what? These terms are all just so embedded into my head that it's hard for me to understand that a lot of people don't understand. So if there's any particular terminology that you want me to go over, I'm gonna do an episode where I talk about all this terminology like footsies, like frame trap, like wake up, anti-air, dash. Like what, maybe you don't even know what dash means, you know? Go ahead and tweet me with the hashtag first attack, with the hashtag terminology, and um, I will do an episode where I'll try to explain as many of them as I can. So again, Tweet me at Jay Chenzor, hashtag first attack, hashtag terminology, or both, or either one, and I'll try to answer a lot of those questions. Also follow at Ultra David. He's the other half of Ultra Chen TV. He has been putting out a lot of good character guides uh, on our YouTube channel. A lot of really good tech so far. Uh, he has a guide for Zangief, for Fung, and for Dalsum right now, and for Bison, I believe. So he has some videos on there on some basics on how to play them. So definitely check those out as well. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this stuff. Um, like I said, follow us, subscribe to us. If you want to help me afford to buy more equipment so that I don't have crackles or audio cutting in and out, let me know. And, uh, and uh, you know, I have our link to our Patreon down here. You can uh, donate a little bit, and we'll try our best to keep trying to improve the studio. I do have equipment coming in that hopefully will not have either of the problems, crackles and such. Uh, I purchased them. I have them on as fast shipping from Amazon as possible. Maybe I'll get them tomorrow, maybe not in time, but uh, definitely tune in tomorrow as well. We do the Tuesday show on every Tuesday night. That is myself and Mr. Ultra David, where we talk about everything in the fighting game community, upcoming events, game news, results from the, from the previous week. There's a lot of great results, a lot of great tournaments just happened this last week, and lots of cool Street Fighter V stuff. David and I will probably talk about our opinions on the, uh, the game so far. So definitely uh, check those out. Again, follow our Twitch, subscribe to our Twitch, uh, subscribe to our YouTube and uh, thanks everyone for tuning in hope this was useful again if you have any questions even about today's lesson because like I said a lot of information if you have questions please send them to me on Twitter at Jay Chenzor and I will try to answer them as quickly as I can all right so remember everybody um, you know thanks for tuning in and remember you can't KO you cannot KO your opponent without your first attack all right Thanks, everyone. Peace out.